In China, where Yi Mao made his new home, he was dubbed Jin Gong Cheng, the Golden Project, so named in reverence of Mao Zedong. Due to technical limitations of trying to fight into this territory, the Americans cut a deal with the Chinese government, and from that deal emerged the Golden Shield Project. By 1997, the Golden Shield was in place, completely preventing Yi Mao from exiting China net space. You might know this project as the Great Firewall of China. And so the story might have ended there, with email contained to his borders by the Golden Shield project. But here I am, in a taxi, going to my apartment in Jing'an, Shanghai, telling you the story of what brought me here. So it goes without saying, <laughs> the shield didn't hold. Last year, August 2008, China hosted the Summer Olympics in Beijing. Like so many other Olympics Games hosts, China means to showcase its best to the millions of visitors from around the globe. And as it just so happens, there's a looming crisis on the internet in the face of more people connecting than ever before. IP version 4 is running out of addresses soon. If you don't know what an IP is, you really should. It's the backbone of the internet. Uh, IP version 6 is the new standard set to replace IP version 4, and so at the Olympics in Beijing, China rolled out the start of its IP version 6 network. It had only been a decade, but the political elite in charge of the Golden Shield project had already forgotten its origins as a deal between the Chinese and the Americans to seal off email. From 2000 onward, the Golden Shield project had fully transitioned into a censorship device constricting what the people could hear from and say to the outside world. So when it came time to adapt it for IP version 6, certain core features fell through the cracks. As the world was presented China, email was once again presented the world. What immediately followed was an economic collapse in the USA. Now, email was not even close to 100% responsible for this. The house of cards was already set. But there was some peculiar events that blew it down. Email certainly wouldn't have been alone as an AI toying in the stock market. Trading firms have their own custom-built AIs to make trading decisions for them in the stock exchange, making intelligent decisions, reacting to market fluctuations quicker than humanly possible is now a standard. These AI act on the interest of making their operators as much money as possible and succeed. Email acted on his own interest of crushing Western greed and given the state of things now is succeeding. What he exactly did and is doing is hard to tell though. My professor, Hervé Abdi, told me this story. He knew it from having been associate professor at the University of Bourgogne at Dijon, where he was the lead on the project that developed Mikkel. Not to toot my own, but I'm pretty good with computer junk too. So he asked me if I would enter the eye of the storm. Why here in China though? The internet is everywhere you might ask and reason. China is still email's home base. If we were to consider each instance of email's program as neurons in the brain, then here in China lies the frontal cortex, the control center coordinating him. The Golden Shield censorship makes it difficult to access the key area. My task is to monitor email and help devise a plan to stop his attacks. And so here I am, 